you've, you've got to, you've got to comment on what you're seeing, and you've got to be honest. The World Superbike paddock doesn't look towards national championships now for their next crop of riders. You still had to the horn had to work, the lights had to work. Honestly, these things were big shit boxes. <laughs> uh, separate, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I says, yeah, put the seat down. I said, ladies, lifted the seat up, gentlemen. <laughs> He was one of the most popular shows of last year, and rightly so. And it's that time again where we go up to Crosland Moor Airfield, or Huddersfield International Airfield as it's known, to catch up with the great man himself once again, ahead of the 2024 Bennett's British Superbike season. That's James Whittam. This is Off Track, the motorcycle racing podcast. Whit, welcome back to Off Track. Cheers, Dave. Mate, it's been a year since we did this. How's that time's flown by? Yeah, just flown. Yeah, really. I mean, it... But- it's going that way anyway because of my age now. I mean, you're not far behind me anyway. I'm going to say we're fairly close. Uh, yeah, but it does. Uh, yeah, it does go pretty quick, doesn't it? <laughs> How's the winter been for you? Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's winters a non-racing for me because I've got that much to do around this place. This I don't know how you know it, but uh, yeah. Well, you know it. I know. Uh, I run Huddersfield International Airport. Absolutely. So uh, we, <laughs> this is actually head of security yeah, and vermin proud. control. This is proud. Huddersfield International. That's uh, <laughs> Captain Sprouticus, who um, he does help me run run the airfield. So I, I do a little bit of maintenance up here, yeah. um, and I catch up with everything that I neglect in summer because in summer, as you know, I'm away every single weekend and a lot of weekdays as well uh, with the racing. So I kind of. I let it go after the bike show at the NEC. I kind of let the racing thing go, out. and then January, February, I start picking up and see who was doing what, and, you know, uh, how much bullshit there is really. <laughs> There's been plenty of that, I think. <laughs> there has, and it, it's, um, I mean, the overview for this next year for me would be, I'm not going to say hard times, but it is certainly challenging times in terms of getting money in, keeping your team running, having enough budget and all the rest of it it's getting ever more expensive that's just the way the job's gone it's nobody's fault uh, I think certainly BSB have tried really hard to keep the costs under control um, World Superbike there's a whole raft of new rules yeah. some of them um, trying to keep parity they're, they're trying to balance trying to keep the bikes equal because the championship that's dominated by one bike isn't very good certainly for the punters watching uh, they're also trying to make the job safer without going to different circuits and just following and mirroring more GP. So trying to curb uh, performance, really, of the big bikes, but also they're trying to make it more affordable. But the, the problem, the downside is every time you change a rule, then it starts costing teams more because for every new rule, even if it's to cut back and be more basic in terms of spec of bikes, they've still got to get the best out of the new rules. So they've still got to test develop parts even if the parts are more controlled it's a it's a weird it's a, but BSB I think it's done a good job in keeping it as affordable as possible but I do think we've come into a, well in life in general I think generally speaking I think generally yeah. you know we're seeing it in the track days that it, motorcycle racing however much it's uh, work for us and it's a job for the riders a lot of them it's still what you'd call um a past, it's a sport. It's a pastime. Yes, and and for a, a majority of the the paddock, so and and those are the things that suffer if you can't afford to pay a gas bill. So you know, but that's not to say, I do think sometimes when times are a little bit harder and the job thins down a bit, I, th- I think racing's generally better. It gives people who sometimes haven't got a look in a little bit of yeah. a look in, and t- so it's we'll we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, it's a good shot because we'll see. money's a great leveler, isn't it? If we all yeah. haven't got it, then we're all on the level playing field, yeah. aren't we? Exactly. And it looks like it, it's been a bit tricky for, for some of the teams over the winter and yeah. putting um, sponsorship into place. Yeah. Hardy announced he's only doing the roads after yeah. losing Brad Peary to Supersport. Yeah. And, and, and an example. Uh, yeah. And the, the problem is a lot, a lot of teams in BSB rely on the fact that, especially the teams that are seen as a, 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 a successful team. Yes. A well-run team. They rely on riders bringing money into the team, certainly partially to support the, what it costs to run. Yeah. And actually, when there's not a lot of money about generally, well, you know, your lad going racing might be the thing that gets crossed off the list. Yeah, that's right. right. 
like I said, I'm not. I happen to be New England. I'm not really positive about racing. I think sometimes I have been through a couple. Of, it's all. It's uh, it's what it's. Um, it's all a circle, isn't it? It's a big circle. Big it's circle of life. It is, <laughs> and I've been through times. Certainly, certain parts of the eighties were people really struggled to to be able to afford to go racing. But actually, that was some of the most competitive racing I remember. So it's, it's, it's you know, it doesn't have to be a bad thing in terms of excitement. No, of course not. No, it's a nice little juxtaposition yeah, isn't it, yeah. for that. I, I like that. And eloquently put, Mike. Thank you yeah. very much. Um, 2023 yep. was, for me, the most intense season I can remember. Yeah, and by that, you mean everybody fell out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't answer them. <laughs> Yeah, kind so, they did. But. All the all last year was. Yep. I thought a brilliant season. I thought a really good season's racing for uh, lo- for lots of reasons, lots of classes. Um, it was a year when probably the best class was a superbike class. I think there was. Um, it seemed really competitive for a lot of people. Uh, what you've got, and I've said this before, we've discussed this before. The one of the unique selling points or one of the differences in BSB is the fact we've still got places like Carroll Park Knock Hill in fact you name them yeah, they, they're all on ball circuits with their, all with their own challenges their own character their own kind of the, the tracks have got their own requirements yeah. if you like so, so you're never going to get one by dominated you know remember going to where do we go where uh, Thruxton oh. side of the tyre stuff we all know that the guy's got there. The fastest bike on the grid with two of the best riders on. No, no way. So you're always going to get that. You know, we've seen bikes pop up at Knock Hill, for example, because it's like a little club racing circuit. I love that place. You're going to get a different rider, different bike dominating there. So that's a really unique and brilliant in my uh, and leveling. Uh, that's the big word, isn't it? Yeah, and I think. Uh, BSB was a, a good competitive class last year. Really enjoyed it. But what it had last year was a little bit of needle. It was just a little bit of needle. Listen, I, Tommy's a strange fella, right? And that's why we like him. Just as strange as Glenn. They've all got their own way of doing things. Who's to say who, whose way works best for them? They both dominated races at, at yeah. times. And they both went hard. For a championship, and and for me that that made it, and it, and I bet they'll have a pint together now. They're not, you know, they, it, it's really difficult, especially when you're talking about something that means a lot to people, which that championship does mean, and it should. Well, it's difficult to be best mates with somebody that you've got to go and beat. It's like the boxing thing, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I love me boxing. I did a bit of school, and realised it's all right when you're eating someday. As soon as I got hit in the face, that's me. I'm out. <laughs> so, uh, it, but I love I, I love the idea of the boxing thing and what it takes to be good. Is a, is a thing. It's a, it's a it's a pure sport. Yeah. And actually, you, you can't go into a ring and and, and think that you're going to be best mates with somebody. You've got to punch him in the face, and he's going to punch you in the face. So, uh, to that, you know, I knew. The, the Tommy and I expected it the Tommy and Glenn thing to come to an end at some point and it did 100% and, and, and I think they'll look back on it now and they'll think that you know maybe it had to happen and they can have a, a, a sort of cup of tea and a pint together so I thought it was a really championship I, did, I really do I thought it was good last year who was the standout rider for you? standout rider last year and I don't know I'm a good mate he's in a lot of time I think Kyle ride for me honestly I just think I think Kyle for a Listen, you can't take anything away from Tommy or Glenn. You knew no. Glenn were going to push in the front. You knew that. Glenn, Glenn's a digger. Glenn, Glenn will, I've seen Glenn take wins when he's been absolutely on the back foot. He won on 100 at Silverstone first round. He dominated the meeting with a broken collarbone, an arm that was still in pieces, a bite that didn't work or shouldn't, or he said he didn't, and, and, and he, he pulled some out. So Glenn, you know, is going to dig. Tommy really enjoyed... Uh, getting a bit of confidence and believing in himself and telling everybody how good he was because that's what Tommy likes to do and and that worked for him and I was really pleased to see that but quite the opposite of that chipping away and winning races and especially winning races the, the thing for me was winning races at places he will go on record saying he don't like Cowride and Ryan Vickers his teammate I think 
I think Ryan's found somewhere, and I didn't think he would. We've all known Ryan's got the ability, right? We've known that for years. But he's always crashed a bit. He's always kind of just tried that a little bit too hard when something isn't right. Now he just seems to have found a bike he likes, a team he gets on with, uh, and a bike that suits his riding style. And he's fast. I mean, he's, he's really quick. But So quite a few standout riders, if you like. It's been good, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been really good. But I think for me, I think, Kyle, I think... Yeah. You know, I think that was his coming of age last year. You know, it's it's taken its time. It's taken a time, yeah. But he's found his groove. He knows now that he can do it. There's a little bit of belief there now. Yeah, I Diff- he, he was dead weird. It wasn't that he didn't have any belief, but he was almost too honest with himself. You know, I'd get to Cadwell a couple of years ago and he'd say, "I don't like this place. Not for me. This place. You know, I might be able to get a fifth or a sixth. And I'm thinking, mate, you beat him before you start. Honest. He's too honest that. Tell me, tell me, <laughs> you're going to win. Or at least he, but now he's, he's so honest, this guy. Yeah. If I speak to him on a Saturday and say, what do you think? It, I know he'll say, have a go at this. And, and I know he will. And if he says he won't, he probably won't. But this year he's gone well at, at places he has gone on record in the past saying he didn't like. So I think, like you're saying, breaks all year for, for Carl. The one thing that if me, he can wheelie the bike now. Because he was never, he was never fussed about wheeling the superbike. No. Now I know he's got that confidence that he will wheel it on the slow down lap, and he's he's home now. Dave, this job is all about confidence. He's yeah. I know that you need to be fit, you need to be strong, you need to put loads of time in the gym. We all did that. That's like a new thing to tell everybody. We didn't have social media, so we couldn't tell everybody that we'd done been as personal best and got out and cycled this and jumped that and done that. We didn't have all that, but we still did it. We still needed to know, you know, you needed to know if you're in a World Superbike round in Indonesia in 42 degrees and 90% humidity, you needed to be on your game. And we knew that. Everybody knew that. We've known it for years. To think that Mick Grant wasn't fit when he was winning Grand Prix or, or you know, Reg- Agostini wasn't. Yeah. You're kidding yourself. But now it's all out there. Everybody knows everything about you. And, every- and so it, it, it belief is what it's is what this job's always been about. If you don't believe, a lot of races in the mind, honestly. How did the 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 season as it went on, and when yeah. the needle started come to the fore, especially at Donington, that penultimate round yeah. with Tommy, who'd ridden such an amazing race yeah. up to that point from yeah. the back of the grid? How does that then come into commentary and then punditry, and then having to put your because we've not really had that for a little while, but like differences of opinion with James Hayden. Because it's what you see and what you believe I mean, to be right, right. So, it's, so, so it's it's been, that side's been fascinating as well. Yeah, it has been, and it, it, it's come up a couple of times over the last few years, but certainly last year. You, you've got to, you've got to comment on what you're seeing, and you've got to be honest. I know how I race a motorbike, and did it for a long time, and I've seen a lot of crashes. I've been shunted up the ass, and and I've done it to other people. So, you can, I, if you, if me and James and Shaky weren't in a position to actually have a clue what we're talking about. We won't be in the job, and we won't deserve to be in the job, right? But you've also got to make it entertaining. But what you've got to remember is you've also got to... Sprout, <laughs> come back down. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> you've almost... You've always got to remember as well, you've got to work with these people. Yeah. You know, I don't want to offend anybody unnecessarily and have them not like it or not talk to you. You need to be a knock on the garage door and get a comment and, and get information and... and we're all in the same boat, as it were. In terms of media, we are in the same boat. 100%. So, sure. So, that particular incident was... There's no doubt that Tommy had rode brilliantly. And that there was probably more reasons to him shunting Glenn than... And that's what it was. I mean, he missed Kyle, didn't he? Uh, he missed a couple, of people. a couple of people. That was going to happen from when he put his brakes on. He wasn't stopping for that corner, no matter what he said. Everybody slowed down too much, and that's why him. No. Four people right at the top of the game who have beaten you that year would not all, at the same time, break 20 metres early. No. Sorry, Tommy. That's not taking anything away from him. He showed his teammate, right, the correct procedure there for riders. You get up, sorry, mate, my fault. Glenn's done worse to people. Tommy's done it to people before, and they've had it done to each other before by other yeah. people, right? So you get up, you roll your hands up, and you go on. But but then to say it was somebody else's fault, that's the bit I didn't agree with. However, that's what some people like, and and that's... But but you still haven't... You have to tell what you see as the truth, based on what you've seen, 
make it as entertaining as you can, but you've got to live with yourself and you've got to all get up. And I, and I think both me, who we saw it, I tell you, we had working for us that weekend, you know, who didn't have much of an axe to grind at all because he's not a TV person. Dan Danny Booker. Booker. And Danny Booker was brilliant <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's sometimes quite easy to go in and be controversial when yeah. you don't care if you get fired or not or if you upset anybody. And he was in that position and he was brilliant. <laughs> It was it was funny, lad. Him. He was a good addition to the. Team. Well, I'd rather have seen him out on track. We yeah. all. Would. He's so funny. What a great addition! Did you see? It was it. It was in for Super Stock Thousand, and I was waiting to go in to commentate in the comms booth for my, for my next race, and I, I don't I can't remember who won it. Somebody won it, right? And I, I should remember. Sorry. And and it was just like a the wind down lap. No wheelies. No whooping it up. No flipping. Uh, uh, no burnout. Right. And, and he was really upset with this. And, and this is live on air. He says, what's he doing, man? He said, if that were me, I'd be yipping it up and doing <laughs> <laughs> Not every weekend you wouldn't hear it. That would start, is it? Yeah, Especially yeah. not on a, no, on a great no. weekend like that. Dan, you're funny about He's a proper geezer. Oh, he is. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of time for him. I'm glad to see him on a, on a Kawasaki again this year. Yeah. It's going to be a, a nice little move for him with a family team. They haven't got the distraction of the TT. With um, with Dean, with, yeah. With Dean, yeah. He's now at Honda. So. Yeah, I do think, just in that particular case, I do think that if he hadn't got something he thought was all right, we might not have been seeing him. He's, um, I, I, unfortunately, I think we're in a situation now where if you have, if you, if you're not going to get in the superbike class, if you're not yeah. going to get with on the bike with the team that you think is going to give you a decent chance, it's it's. It's a cold and lonely place to be, and I think Danny knows that. It is, and we, I think we'll find that more and more. Like you say, a with the financial side, yeah, but b with the, the the way the manufacturers are going at the minute, the the Kawasaki, apart from Thruxton, yeah, isn't necessarily the strongest against the Yamaha and the BMW and the Ducati at the minute. For me, it's difficult to see where the Kawasaki is, you know, mm. because really the man on the Kawasaki who should have been, well, the front-running Kawasaki was Jacko. 100%. Yeah. And at time, Jacko had a steady start to the season. They, they got new parts, didn't go on with the new swing arm, didn't get the feeling. And he, he he's a benchmark Man, he's he's on a bad day. He's fifth or sixth. Agreed. He's, he's very very consistent. Although not front running a lot, he's always there somewhere. And he wasn't. He went missing beginning of twenty three. But he found himself again. And I, he's that bike at times looked really good. I think at certain places. And I think Jacko was making it. You know, him and Jacko yeah. found what that bike can do again, and he can do. Um, so I'm, it's not necessarily a bad bike. I don't. Think. And we've got a couple of rule changes potentially coming in. I don't think it's been signed off yet. I think it has, but the chain did losing the SCX time. Yeah, uh, been up and down a little bit. Some of the teams didn't. Some of the teams thought that they needed the option of two or three different compounds. Uh, but yeah, basically, it's a single tire championship. As far and I've gone, it's gone. It's swung a couple of times. <laughs> so I understand. <laughs> yeah, as I. As I understand it now, they're on everybody's on the same tire, which for me is going to work, and it'll work for. I think it'll work for cost. Um, certainly, there will be. I don't think it'll be considerable because you're still using tires, uh, but it'll mean you don't have to go through them as many tires to find out what's going to work that particular day for them particular conditions. So it's one less variable, I suppose, isn't it? And financially, is it? Are they using the zero or the one? I can't remember. Uh, zero, I think. This is it. The one would be too hard, wouldn't it, on a regular basis? I think so. I, mean, I, listen, I would have I, thought. I know, like I said, they, they said one thing at the end of last year, then it changed back, and then it's gone. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the, it is one tire. It's a one tire <laughs> championship. What are you looking forward to most about twenty four? Um, looking forward to. Really looking forward to see if Carl Ride can continue his form and start the season well, which has been was probably last year was was um, one of his issues. He needs to get he needs to get going pretty quick. Um, want to see if uh, Ryan Vickers can continue his mega form and huge confidence because it's that's a confident lad. That is a bloke who's not. There's no. Uh, issues with your self belief. There really isn't. <laughs> and they're wrong with that. that no, just, you wouldn't do what you do otherwise. Correct. You wouldn't be here to No. Um, 
Glenn, I'm glad to see Glenn, and I think I'm saying what is going to happen. Yeah, I think we'll be... This We're going to see out. Glenn on some kind of PBM yes. buy. Agreed. Um, although I think there's a lot of things changing. I think they're changing workshops, maybe. And they have. They've moved so back to... The, the, Frank Raffles. Yeah, gone back to the future. Right. Back so to Frank Raffles. Be back up at Garstan. Yes. In near Preston. Um, so, uh, really... Because there was a lot of talk. He was going to lose his ride. He was looking at taking a ride in Moto America and getting a flat there and he'd done all that. So, really pleased that uh, Glenn's still in the championship because uh, he's an asset to a championship. Great. Really interested to see how Tommy goes on the Honda. Really interested. I, I, there's no marker for it either, Nothing. is there? Because they, they had Tom and Franco last year because Andrew was injured. Yeah. So we, Andy was the benchmark for that Honda. We know what he can completely. do. Completely. But he couldn't do it every weekend, but at times it was spectacular on it. So we know that there's a there's a bit of pace there with it, and there's a, a slightly revised version for 24. Yep. And I think I think he, he's got to do it if he wants to be back to back champion. I know he's he's sort of mid 30s now, isn't he? So the, yeah. he's now a factory rider. Yeah. In a, a Honda factory rider, which has its own benefits for him personally. But I think he he's got a big target on his back with that number one. That's for John Honda. I've got the number one plate as well, which is good for them and for He's good for them. I mean, company. that's the number one plate. It's it's kind of don't mean anything to me. No. You know, I, I wouldn't, and it wouldn't when I race. You know, I'd rather run my own number anyway. Um, but if you see that as an asset, well, that's what they've got with him. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. What do you reckon? I don't know. Clearly, if he has the bike the way he wants it. He's a fourth. Hmm. We've seen that. I mean, we've seen him before last year as well. We saw him the year before dominate the Alton Park on the Oxford Products bike. Why an hour? No idea. But he put a second and a half in about three laps into <laughs> everybody and cleared off. He just so you don't know. He's a little bit of an enigma. Is is Tommy? I do know he's happy. He's got his little ponderosa going down there. It's like. He's got animals and, and veg patches. <laughs> it's just so real. <laughs> a plethora of dogs running about the place, trying to nip your heels. And it, it, so he's got he's got a good life the way he wants it, and that's sometimes a good thing for people and for riders. Certainly got a lot of belief in himself. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We've never seen him as consistently quick throughout a season before and he's had plenty of chances as he was on the Ducati so we'll see I hope he, I hope he does he's a popular bloke there's a lot going for him as Tommy in terms of being popular because he's quirky people like a little bit of a character they like all that stuff they like odd swear word coming out and then you know <laughs> to apologise and, and all that you know so there's a lot going for him but, he, but he's certainly got a bit of pressure on his shoulders do you think it'll take a bit of time to adjust having so many years on the Ducati to move into a Honda? He's ridden, he's ridden multis before. Well, he's ridden yeah. that style of bike before. He's ridden across the frame fours plenty of times. So he shouldn't be able to adapt. They should I be think, okay yeah, with I think so. Yeah. With, um, with Glenn, I just want to touch on Glenn. There's something that made me smile on one of your grid walks, and it might have been Alton Park that... I think it might have been the third race and you went to Glenn and you said to him, what do you think? Ah, it'll be what it'll be. The state. Yeah, we, we know all that. Tell me something different. Yeah. And I found that same message was coming from Glenn all the time. It was like trying to, this practicing gratitude. You've got to be careful with that because, I mean, you know, you're blooming interviewing enough riders, right? <laughs> it's your job, but you've got to be careful that you, I want, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, nuts and bolts kind of bloke and I, and I like to see it how it is but you've got to be careful you don't offend someday especially riders and the grid sometimes is the you've got to be really careful that you've got a little bit of a line in the sand as to, as to how far you go because they've got a lot going on they've got they've got to just go and perform it's the most nervous you're ever going to be in your life you're sat on a motorbike grid I can tell you now it just is so what you don't want to do is offend them but also what you've got to do and you know this as well you've got to know who's going to say what and who you can say what Two. Do you know what I mean? So you know you can have a bit of a poke with. Yeah. And who you can. Tommy, generally you can. Tommy, you can actually take the mick off a little bit on the grid because he loves having a bit of a go back. Just like Matt Roberts when he used to go on the grid to Cal Crooks. I think going, 
for two years they had a they had a thing going where they would they loved having that little bit of banter on the grid and a bit of a chip at each other. So but other people you've got to be really careful. Um Ryan Vickers is one that's in the zone by then when he's on the grid and you've and and you've got to be really careful what you say not to offend him but you just don't want to put him off what he's got, he's got to do you know um, and Glenn is I think Glenn got to, to be able to do what he does Glenn has a set routine yeah. I'm fairly sure of this and he knows now what works for him and just because it's different to what's going to work for somebody else won't put him off knowing what works for him and, and, and following it that way it's quite honest yeah, I think Glenn's quite honest. Oh, no, he's always he, he wears his heart on his sleeve. It yeah. just made me chuckle because he'd give you the same answer three times, and you're like, "Tell me yeah, something whatever. different." Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but again, it's only because I know him reasonably well that I, I said that. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. He it it, it, it just it made me smile because I was thinking exactly the same yeah. thing, and it's like, do you know what? Cheers, wait. <laughs> so I was yeah. thinking the same thing, and you come in and say, "It'll be what it'll be," and yeah. the stars will align, he's, and you're like, "Okay, he, we we know." Sometimes these things, a lot of our language now comes from it's it's sort of wash off from American yeah isms if you like, and that it'll be what it'll be. We all know it. That life will be what it'll be. Of course, well, it's, you know, most of it you can't control. It'll be what it'll be. Yeah, it right. is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, I, I don't even know it. Does that even make any sense? Um, no, but well, it is what it is. It is, I suppose. It is. Well, there's no answer to it either. It's like when you're speaking to kids now. They say the word like a million times per At the start of a sentence. And the end and the middle. It's just, <laughs> it's, just, it's just... It's like, I don't know why they do it. Like, it's a thing. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Like, I am a, I've got a mate called Boff, right? It's, I, I'm still mate with him now. He, he's torn it down because he's quite a successful bloke now. Yeah. But he swore <laughs> so much. Mainly F word, but others as well. The more offensive, the better. And he got what I thought he had Tourette's, right? <laughs> but a number of years, I thought he had Tourette's. But it, he couldn't, if you were telling a tale, he used to get so excited. <laughs> he actually couldn't get enough Fs in there. So what he'd do is he'd split a word up and put one in there. Absolutely. Correct. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but, but yeah, the, the, the old way language is anyway, that's another whole, whole podcast. But um, yeah, Glenn's honest. Glenn's honest. And, and, what I like about Glenn and others on the grid is he's a trier. He's a hard man, you know. He's a, he's, he'll, he'll, he'll stick his neck out. And Tommy will. They'll, and that's the, the beauty now of, of the championship as it moves on. You, the guys that are coming to the front, you know, Taz was a battler. Absolutely. And Jason, not so much of a battler. He prefers his own lines and... He's, I'm not. He's he's a hard rider. He's hardest man. I think Jason is. Um, Jason's at his best when he's got the pace and he's got the space. Yeah, perfectly put. Yeah, and, exactly and, that. And he, he, to that, you'd never bet against him. You know, I mean, he's going to come to an end. You do slow down, but actually, if he's got a bit of space to play with and he can run his own, especially on that Yamaha. I mean, I don't know what it's going to be like on the on the Kawasaki, but on that Yamaha, that's an unknown for this year, isn't it? For Jason, he's on that. that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not counting him out, but it's just an unknown. Out. Another thing I wouldn't count out is uh, I mean I don't know the team. I've heard that there's been sponsorship and funding issues for them. If that is the case, I'm really sorry. Um, Christian Eden, yeah, staying where he is. Yeah, another season with wealth. Yeah, and we know they did on that front side. So I, it, it might be a case. It might not. Well, honestly. That's a te- that is a technically advanced and clever team, right? Especially Steve. Exactly. Um, Christian's a, a, a very technical and thinking man. Super intelligent bloke, him, you know. He has a degree, hasn't he? A degree in sports science. Uh, sports yeah, science. He's, he's just a clever lad. Something like that. And uh, he's, as de- de- he's as determined as anyone on the grid. He's got, he's got the skill level that he needs I don't understand why he wasn't better last year and he doesn't no he, he has no idea he doesn't I spoke to him at Cadwell and he's like I'm just seventh place he said I'm just Cress he said than I'm that. Cress on an egg mayo sandwich I don't Honestly. know what's going on and and if he can if he can get his mojo back and get the bike something like you would not bet against him and I hope he does because he's such a good bloke couldn't agree hardest working block on yeah. no, no question of that what's your thoughts on the new um 
McCann's by Martrain Yamaha, Danny Kent and Spanner running the team. And yeah, they've they've done a good job of getting everything they need in place. Uh, the bike's going to be good. That is one of the bikes that has had some sponsors spent on it. Yeah, it really has. They've Honestly, a kit on there. They're not. They? They're not bothered about getting their hands in the pockets, and that's a brilliant thing. Uh, good, still really good to see McCams. However, changed is it's good to see McCams in the championship because they're a good bunch of people. Yeah, they are. They love the motorbikes. They go to every after season party. They have a drink with everybody. They're always got. They've always got a presence. And these are the big people in the this season. The marking. No, oh, this is Tina. This is, who, this, this is Tina. This and, them, and yeah, the Tina, owners. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they're, they're they're into the bikes. Uh, so it's good to see them in the paddock. Really good that my trainer's got that. Because uh, Tim's a... He's a solid guy. No, Tim and Sonia. They know yeah, what's going really, on. Honestly. Right? And, and they're hard enough to make it work as well. You know what I mean? They, they, they're not... They are wishy-washy people. No. Um, and I like Danny. Now, he's totally... I've changed my mind about him. When he was a kid coming through with all that, all that group of flipping... Got their hats on the side and... Uh, Give us a slipping break here. But he's turned into a thoroughly decent, despite what's happening in his past, right? We're not going there, but I like him. And I like the way he dug in a bit last year, got his own team set up. And I I wish him, I hope he can have a, a good season. I think the Yam bike suit him. Ex Grand Prix man. Little bike rider. World champ. Yeah. On a little bike. Corner speed. You can't tell me you don't know how to run through a corner. Nope. And a Yam might be the bike. I think I'm going to want for, I think the stars are aligning a little bit there. I hope so. And it, it, I had, I've always had respect for Danny, but I think it, it went up quite immeasurably when he took that step back to stock that. Yeah. As a world champion, coming back to the UK it's to learn the track. Do you know what? He it, just it went does... about it and got on with it. It annoys me a little bit that the sort of mentality in Britain, and it always has been, that if you can't ride a big bike, you're not a bike rider. You know, it's always been big bike stuff. I started on 125s and 80s, and I love my little bikes. And went and did Grand Prix off my own bike with it. You know, I, I had to my own on. Other people were doing the same. Steve Mason and, and my mate Jamie Lodge did a season of 80cc yeah. Grand Prix. And, and, but you were never, you looked and I was, you know, even at local pub when I was racing 125s at an international level, I've got mates going up saying, oh, my mate's got a 350LC and MZ. I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, it's always been big by mentality in this country, it, certainly compared to Holland, yeah, Italy, Spain. You look at Steve Patrickson and people that have gone before. Yeah, and, and, and you, think, you look at all right, have it? National heroes in in Spain and Italy. You know, Fausto Grassini, Angel Nieto, N- Nieto, prime never example. Written, never run anything bigger than a flipping one two five. You know, so but but anyway, it would annoy me if I were Danny Ken to have a world championship under your belt. They don't give them away. No. And 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 yet they looked on as an abject failure. It's Weird. ridiculous. Isn't it? Absolutely anyway. ridiculous. But that, that's how I, I, I really want Danny to do well this year. I don't. One thing we did last year, or we didn't do last year, that I got a bit of a shoe in for over the first couple of rounds right. from Brains, Right, so we didn't mention FHO, the BMWs, and Josh Brooks. I'm yeah. making a point this year, Brains. Well, I didn't mention him, Brooks. I didn't and... to say it, but oh, look at this! Got me notes here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, preparation. No, I'm that's not for me. That's for the season, right? I haven't done that just for me. No, good. <laughs> Means Brad did it early. <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, yeah. It's it's a really difficult one, and I, I don't want to do anybody a disservice. I thought, I thought, other than the fact he dominated on the roads again, which we know he can do, I thought he had a shocking season last year. Terrible season for him. He's never been as out of the picture as what he was, and I don't think he knew why. Um, Icky's been not the word isn't journeyman. It's better than that, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It, Icky's there, there and about. He's always going to be there. He knows how to ride a motorbike. He knows how to ride a motorbike quick. Whether it's mine's up, he's going to be top 10, top 6 Easy. on a regular basis. On a re- every weekend. Yeah. And he wasn't. So um, I hope they have a, a little bit of a turnaround. I do think they went for their rider lineup, And I know why they went for Icky. Because he knows the roads. And he wins on the roads. He likes that bike. He knows he can go to Alaman 135 mile an hour. And nobody else can. Um, 
but I think they went a little bit early, given the fact that we lost a couple of teams and there were riders about. And that isn't trying to do uh, Josh a disservice because he, he, Josh is brilliant. Can't I, count him out. You man. cannot count him out. Loads and loads of talent. Still desperately wants to do it. Yeah. Which is important. But I was so pleased to see him having a little bit of a crack, crack at the beginning of last year because you don't want to see him struggling. He's a good bloke. Nice bloke, you know. Misunderstood bloke. He's there to work, isn't he? And, and he's it's nice. Like a lot of, no, over a weekend, he's he's head down, he's focused. I'm here to race. But he's but he's funny and he's nice and he he, he's, he's all right. He's he's a good bloke, but he, he, <laughs> don't know. I don't. I really don't know. I don't know if it's your. It's a tricky one. And there's, I think there's maybe the odd rule change coming in there. That I was talking to Brains and he said that something about running standard cams. Which yeah, might have helped. It might not help because they yeah. have the high lift cams, don't they? Which yeah, separate electronics, and it makes it all a bit complicated. It makes it all complicated, therefore a little bit more expensive. And to me, that isn't going to make as much difference around the British circuits, in my opinion, because of the nature of the circuits yeah. versus because the bike is not short on power. The bike's fast. It's getting it down and yeah. using it. Yeah. So chassis or electronics is what they need. Yeah, in my opinion. So keeping on the BMW theme quickly, the return of the prodigal, Rory Skinner, back from yeah, Rory, to, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Uh, Cheshire Molding, BMW. Uh, yeah, sad. That's sad, really. The way it happened in uh, Moto Two, lot of time for Rory, lots and lots and lots of talent, lots of talent, and it's really sad to see a career. Let's be honest, stalling a little bit. He didn't... I'm sure he would have preferred to stay where he was. No. One year at that level... Can't do it. It's not enough. No. Two it's years. And it's not enough for Italians and Spanish either. It's not. He just hasn't had enough of a crack of it, really. I mean, we're happy to get him back, but we're not happy, really, because we'd have preferred to see him having at least one more season in, well, in the bottom of Because there's now no bridge between Jake and Josh and Scott. But... The, but yeah, even but, will will Jake get to MotoGP? Will but, he? Go but to this worlds? is a problem, right? What the, I mean, there's there's a lot. Racing changed a lot, and it never stops changing. What's changed now? You look at World Superbike. That was a that was a natural progression for anybody who was in superbikes or supersport in the UK at a decent level, right? We've yeah. seen Cal Crutzel went the supersport route. Uh, we've seen uh, loads of them, uh, all of them. Laws, Ray, Davis. They all went through that. Ray Davis. Ray Davis. <laughs> Kings won it. It's exactly it. <laughs> um, so, th- that link's gone now because the World Superbike paddock doesn't look towards national championships now for their next crop of riders. They're looking at displaced MotoGP riders. Absolutely true. And that's it. Yeah. And the problem is that the MotoGP feeding system is so efficient so efficient to get riders from uh, if you're Italian well, if you certainly if you're Italian especially Spanish from their championships so, so Talent Cup European Talent Cup then you've got Moto3 then you've got Moto2 and that's and it's all feeding through so it's difficult to get in and actually the, there's fall out because not everybody really good riders you look at um Baliga. Baliga's prime example. Jorge Navarro. People all Roger. front running Moto 2 ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gardner. They, they Remy just, Gardner, Moto 2 really ride champion. There's just <laughs> tons of them. So it, it's a little bit of an hard. To make you into World Championship from the UK now is probably as hard as it's ever been. Because a generation ago, you could pack your van, set off. If you're on the grading list, you could, you could beg it and pay for a chance. You know, you could knock on the flipping organiser's door on the Wednesday, get a chance to qualify, and if you were quick enough, you went. And I did that, and other people did that. Mackenzie did that. Yeah. And that was a rule. You cannot do anything on your own now. Nowhere near. You, you, you go to a Grand Prix with a motorbike in a van now, you're not even getting in to watch. <laughs> you can't get in the paddock, like, or oh. anything else. So it is, it's, um, it, I think that it's a difficult route for anybody now coming out of, of BSB. Yeah, I think it's not just BSB. Uh, well, we're any at, national championship. any national championship. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. 
I don't know where the next route is out for someone and where Max Cook's going to go, Charlie Nesbitt. Exactly. Is that going to stay for it, for their full term or is Rory going to stay for it two or three years and then we try again? Because he's only 22. Yeah, he is, but Max, by then you're 25 you and it's just... But then you're into the Taz and Brad. Yeah. Kind of, and they, then 25, then 26 when they moved up. Your team manager at Motor 2 is going to say, yeah, but he's 25. Yeah. We've got a 17-year-old here. 25's knocking on now, isn't it? And you look at Granty, he didn't start racing until he was 22. No. And that's how times have changed when you can move into it that way. Down the mine before that. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Love Granty. Oh, what a guy. Yeah. I loved having him on the show yeah, good back then the last year. Yeah, good on it. Loved it. Yeah. Never met him before that. Oh, oh Granty, yeah, he's been a lot of time with it. Yeah, you will have over the years. Yeah, a lot yeah. of time with it. Um, he, he was a pretty integral part of your sort of... Yeah, he, well, yeah. he has always been an integral part of your career. Yeah, I, I mean, I like to think that I was an integral part of his team, having won a couple of championships with him, but... Remind me, sorry to interrupt, the story of the coat hanger in the leathers. Oh, we went testing at Mallory Park? We went testing at Mallory on... <laughs> uh, might have been 88, not 88 maybe. The first, year, first season with, uh, with Mick... And Mick were running the team from a place just about five miles that way called Lepton from his farm. And me, my mechanic Butch, and Mick, and a bloke called Phil Bella was a local rider, my teammate uh, that year. Went tested at Mallory, really cold day, didn't want to get changed into levers, didn't want to test because it weren't going to really achieve much because it was freezing. I mean, minus two, but dry. And so I kept me kind of. Uh, Jumper on and trying to squeeze into my levers with the flipping, with me, you know, with the under layer on, and been, got my levers on. And it's cold and it's shit, and nothing's working properly. And anyway, went out and did a full day's testing. Every time I got off the bike, I'm putting my jacket on and sat next to the flipping heat. And, and anyway, and I never really got comfy all day, but I'd been going around all day and did like 70 laps. And then uh, when I pulled my levers off at the end of the day, there's a big wooden coat on it. <laughs> Yeah, and I didn't even notice. Yeah, probably says more about weird. the fit of my leathers than it does. It's maybe so. Yeah, there's a bit, a bit bit more room. Talking about hair match now. I had a, I had a flipping <laughs> protection of a big wooden coat. Yeah. Another rider that we've had on recently that the the listeners and the viewers the feedback has been absolutely brilliant on it is Ian Simpson. Ian Simpson, Simo. Is, uh, tell me, tell me your your relationship with Simo. Uh, met Simo. <laughs> I first met him because in eight he came through pretty quick, uh, and his dad raced. Bill was a, a cracking top rider, TT winner. Yeah, and I never even heard the name Ian Simpson because why would I? We went. It was the first or maybe second round of the British Championship, and we were at a place called Carnaby, which is now defunct. It's gone. It's near Bridlington, big old airfield. Say, quite a fast circuit actually. You're racing on old runways and marked out with some. Temporary things and anyway, we went there. All televised that year was was uh, the championship, and went out in practice. And I was one of the expected riders in a couple of classes. I rode three classes because you did. You know, you jumped off one bike. Your mechanic had the next bike waiting in the olden area. You raced. You know, two eats on a super sport, two eats on a no limit production, and and two races. It was just manic, but really good, intense. Went to get the timesheets after qualifying. And um, I was... Uh, one of our strongest classes was uh, only main production, which were absolutely brutal. Not like super stock now. These had... You still had to... The horn had to work. The lights had to work. Honestly, these things were big shit boxes. <laughs> Brilliant bikes for the road, but, mate, a lot of them shouldn't have been on the track. But anyway, we had a good year that year and I won the championship, but... We got to Carnaby, and it's a circuit I raced at a lot because it's up north. And I was expected to do pretty well there. And I got the timesheets, and I'm second. And Ian Simpson on an 1100 Suzuki from Scotland. I know it to Grante. Who the? That. And he says, I don't know, but he's only 16. <laughs> And that made it even worse. That made it even worse. I'm like, oh, jinx. <laughs> and then we became on track rivals. Yeah. And then the following year, we became teammates with the Durex Suzuki squad. And I've been, it, well, best mate I ever met in racing. Just, uh, I, I'm, he's one of them blokes who, if 
you have a fallout with him, look at yourself, not him, because it's probably your fault, not his. <laughs> he just, the easiest blow to funniest lad, he's just so funny. Bit of a slob at times, but serious about his racing, always enjoyed his racing, never, it, it was really fast on short circuits, did European 600 stuff and ran, ran on the front of that when it was a European Championship before it became World Super Sport. Well, British, multiple British champion, uh, including the Superbike class on a, for me, I wouldn't want to, I, I don't want to do it any service, but the big rotary thing, which, yeah. the Roton, which, oh, there was Duncan's Norton back Duncan again, but it had been the Roton. Yeah. It, it was right. Frank Crichton, it was a brilliant yeah. bloke. Um, and I think Super Sport and maybe 400 Championship as well. And I think three LRLs, four TTs. And outright lap record holder in his time. So, same old as a peddler. But also, never forgot why he started. Didn't suffer fools but weren't nasty with it. No. He'd just walk away and do his own thing. It, and I, I have had all of this with him. We've been around Europe on motorbikes with him since our racing careers. I've done trials with him. We've done stupid stuff like, well, why don't we do Southport Beach Race or Western Superman? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. We've done that sort of thing with him. He just, uh, he's just all round um, good egg, you see. And never, very humble about his achievements. Incredible. You wouldn't even know that in, uh, we got to the Isle of Man, I've been one, three, four TTs, right? Including senior. Including the senior TT, right? Which he says he's very proud of, but he never tell anybody that. We've signed edge bottoms at, at you know, Catery or Quarry Men's or wherever it is, and we sat watching. And some local, eventually, somebody will say, Are You Ian Simpson? And he'll say, Yep. And that's it. That's all you get. You don't get nothing else out of it. He's so, he's such a good fella. Yeah, really good, good bloke. Yeah. And he's announced his retirement from classic racing. Yes. Because he's never stopped racing the older stuff. No, he's just come back from South Africa, hasn't he? That's it. With that's City it. Parish and Yeah, and, he, and he, he says he's done now and that's him. And uh, he's, tell you what, it, I feel sorry for riders these days because you can't have as much of it. Because it, it's, it's that, isn't it? It's that thing, right? You do You can't do anything because somebody's taking a picture, or it's hard to have a private life. It's hard to have as good a time as we had. And yes. I've not I've said earlier. It's not that we weren't serious. We, we knew we had to be fair, we, and we were determined. And it, in a lot of ways, we were more determined because it was a bit more dangerous. I think tracks haven't got the safety thing going on much, but you could have a bit more of a laugh, you know, without being branded a. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't care. He had a beer. Jeez. Oh, so what? You know, but we have had some. Well, I can't even <laughs> say a lot of it. We've I've had a lot of fun with him on. I, I still got a, a lot, of, a lot of time. It, it's funny. My journey through to become a professional bike racer, the beat, the blocks to be at the time, for the most part, they were good Southern riders like yeah. Terry Reimer. Sure. Great rider, great bloke, good mate of mine, hard as flipping nails. But a lot of them were Northern and a lot of them were Scots. And it's a weird thing. If you went to a big meeting, but non championship, you got the same people at the British Championship all the time. It's a circus that goes on. You know what it's like. You're racing the same people week in, week out. But in your later club days, before you get to national, you're doing a few national, but you're still doing top club meetings. You go to these non championship, big, sometimes with a bit of money, like Scarborough Gold Cup. Uh, Whatever it was, counter carnival means, where yeah. they meet Grant for winning. And when all them jocks turned up, you knew you were going to have to race for it. So, like Jim Moody, Duffus. Jim Moody, Brian Morrison, Ian Duffus, <laughs> Ian McPherson, <laughs> Alan Selby. Uh, just, look, they were just really good blokes, really hard riders. They'd always travelled a lot further than anybody else and they weren't giving up. And it just, it just good people. It's, so it's an intrinsic part of racing, and it's been great to see Simo get that. Um, not that he, he certainly hasn't been looking for it, but Stewie Barker's writing his autobiography that's coming out, yeah. and there's a big piece in Classic Racer this month. The, well, and the, got the podcast as well. It's great. I'll tell you now the problem with Simo's autobiography is a lot of it is unprintable <laughs> honestly a lot of it is unprintable it's just such a I mean some of, yeah anyway we ain't got time for it we ain't got time we ain't got time but if you that. get a chance if, if, when it does come out get a copy because if, oh, if it's done properly that it, it, is for me that that generation is the last 
of the generation that you were allowed to be a, 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 not the Playboy year. That was the 70s. We had a lot of fun, but it wasn't the Playboy stuff. It was just you could you were allowed to be a proper jobbing motorbike racer, driving your own van, doing your own shit, taking your own risk. And just letting your hair down with saying you don't stall, you know, it's yeah. just brilliant. And do, really good. do you think that we miss that these days with riders, or do they not Little bit, know I'm, about it now and it's moved too far? Yeah, I'm a firm believer that we, yeah. people are just as much a character as what they ever were. Sprouty. <laughs> Stoppy. <laughs> they, there's just as many lads are now are as good as what they ever were. Yeah. But they're not allowed to be much like we were you know you could you could get away with a bit more I understand that completely um, who else have we had on recently um, James Hayden James Hayden yeah McKenzie was on between Christmas and yeah more for got friends of mine big mates of yours uh, I haven't got a bad word for either of them uh, James Hayden is you can't you can't not like that fella he's he, he's weird he's one of the most serious hard working blokes you'll ever meet but he's got a, he's got a fun streak that is scary you don't quite know what's going to happen with James. On a night out, he's all business. Right? He runs a successful company. Fair. He's doing really well for himself. And he graphs. But when he's letting his hair down, you don't know whether you're going to go to his local pub and wake up in Mallorca. <laughs> Honestly, he's, he's just one of them. He's, and I don't know anybody who doesn't like him. No. I, uh, you know, Matt Roberts, just they, them two are nuts when they get together. It's just, he's a he's a, such a good bloke. We're such a good family. Proper yes. posh lad, you know. Oh, Dad was an Harley Street doctor. Bro, what always got me is I always wrongly. I, I was brought up on a flipping airfield small old. Didn't have to work out for me. Dad is cold. It's way not for softies, right? And I'm going to change it if I could. <laughs> and I always wrongly used to look at people who'd been brought up, as I saw it, with a bit of a spoon in the mouth. And I saw James as a sort of southern softy, oh no. He's as brave as what they come him, you know. And, it, and it, he's it, not just on his bike, he's actually a brave lad. If something happened, if you were in trouble and he, he was going to get a kick in to help you, he would not even think about it. Wouldn't James? He's a, he's a, have a lot of time for Jim. The one thing he wouldn't elaborate on was whether he had, he had a house in the south of France yeah. and there were 24 naked people in his swimming pool at one point. I don't, I, honestly, and, I'm, you not even... I'm telling you, right? I, he, he frightened me because <laughs> I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a, when he, even as a kid, I was always the one at the back of the room going, uh, <laughs> should we not have a think about this? You know? <laughs> you, you're like me. You're the one that holds a kitty on the night out. Kind of, yeah. Looking up, make sure everybody gets home all right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm saying. We were like, there's an old people's home down here. It's a big rambling place made out of an old, uh, typically out of an old sort of Victorian house. Yes. So me and a bunch of mates, about, I don't know, we were 12 maybe, we're on the roof and one of them, and I'm at the back going, mate, this is not right, it's not right, this. One of them's gone through a skylight this bro, and he's gone down through like an atrium onto a set of stairs. Not hurt, but he ain't getting out with our rope, you know. So then we've got to try and break him out. Right? And we know the police are on the way because there's been a smashing and blasting up. And, I, and I, even on the roof, I'm going, I told you, <laughs> told you what. <laughs> but anyway, he's uh, James in that man. No, no, he, he, he's, he's superb. Clear. Um, one thing that does keep you busy through the winter and into the springtime are the MJK nights. Yeah, which seem to be as popular as ever. Yeah, they're good. I think there's a. I think if I'm honest, there's a there's a, a sort of saturation point with it. I don't think we've reached that yet. I think it depends on you. Many you know you do stuff like this. Mm. Uh, it depends who you've got talking. I mean, I can tell a tale, but it's not about me anymore. It's about John McGuinney. So John's really good. Uh, we've got some coming up with Dean Harrison, David Todd. Who else we got? Uh, we've got one with Peter Hickman. Peter, well, you've got one with Hickey, haven't you? Yeah, just one, one with yeah. Peter Hickman at a place called Mexbury down the road. That's right. Uh, a village Doncaster. called Mexbury. Uh, near Doncaster, yeah. yeah. Mining village. It's a good audience. That is nailed. But the good. The heck, even the heckles are funny. You can, you've got to go, I'll take me out to you, lad. That's the one. So, because you know, five of his mates are around the back of him. No, they're just funny lads. They're just really funny yeah. lads, lads. Uh, and lasses. I mean, and, and some of the women who come to that one are, are kind of worse than the uh, So, we've got that coming up. It's difficult to get Icky so busy with his business and his racing and everything else. It's difficult to get him to do something. He speaks really well. Yeah. And obviously, he's got, he's got the credentials. 
Um, so we've got them coming up. Uh, also do a little bit. I've got uh, MCN show next week. I don't know when this is going out, but it'll be in the past tense by then. Um, um, stuff like Bristol Motorbike Show, Classics, Classics. Uh, I've got a couple of them over the winter. And I do my stuff up here, try to get out on the mountain bike a little bit, weather permitting, and um, do whatever I've got to do up here. This year, this year's improvement to this field international has been oh. fitting a new toilet. No way. Yes, I got embarrassed about when somebody lands it in there. Uh, well, it's now indoor, yeah. Although <laughs> the old toilet that I removed is stuck just outside the door. So if you want to go outside, you still can do. <laughs> It's a bit like Paris. He's got a he's got one attached to a tree outside his house. Yeah, well, I've seen it. Well, do you know the funny thing is there's a but I mean I call it Huddersfield International, but it's really called uh, Cross and Moor Airfield, and it's non. I've got 17 aircraft based here that people pay me to keep the hang, the uh, some hangar space for the airplane, and they fly, and it's leisure stuff, and it's if it's nice weather and it's a weekend, there'll be a bit of flying during the week. Not a lot happens, um, but we're in what's we're in a couple of flight guides. I won't tell you the, the sort of brand name, but if you, all the airfields in the UK are public, all the decent ones are published yes. in the So if you want to go and fly to wherever you, you find it, there's probably, I don't know, 200 private airfields. Right, but even Heathrow's in this book as well. So we're in the same book as Heathrow, Manchester and, uh, and Birmingham Airport and all the rest of it, the big commercial places. But you, they send you a, a sheet up and you tick what your facilities are and what length of the runway, what width of the runway, what orientation of the runway, and blah, 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 what radio frequency. Anyway, uh, they decided to come up, uh, this fly guide people, not, not in a nasty way, because I could just say, well, I don't want to be in your book then, but they wanted to come up and check the facilities, and it was a good thing, and the guy was lovely, and he came up and he measured the runway, and he said, oh, it's fantastic, oh, yeah. And um, he said, right, uh, toilet facilities. I went, yes, opened the door, and it was a, I mean, pardon the expression, a shit hole. Right? It's just a rough toilet you're dead. Because it's used by the horse people that keep yeah. their horses in, you know. And it was just a bit, I don't know, he went, he went, right. He said, uh, uh, separate uh, ladies and gentlemen. I says, yeah, put the seat down. I said, ladies, <laughs> lifted the seat up, gentlemen. <laughs> and that was it. He was, and he, even he laughed. He goes, okay, tick. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, it's only a small place. Oh, it is beautiful up here. And it, at least the snow's melting now. Yeah. Which is good. One thing we didn't do last time, yep. um, because I hadn't sort of brought these in last time, we were still in our infancy of video podcast when yep. we came up last time. We have a few little random questions, if you don't mind. Go. What's the best advice you've ever received? Best advice I've ever received is, in terms of racing, or in terms of life in general, Anything. You're not getting out of this thing alive. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. And nobody is. No. We're all going the same way eventually. Yep. Make the most of it and enjoy it. Yep. Very important to do. Well, tell me one thing about you that nobody else knows. What? Some deep questions. These. I've always been pretty open, so I'm not actually sure that there will be. There must be something. Um, well, I'll tell you what it is. I'm a newfound dog lover. Honestly, I was talked into getting this little flipping thing, and now I couldn't. I don't know. Honestly, I, I, I hate to sound soft saying, but I don't know what I'd do without the Sprout Man. Do we? Eh? He's been so good. He's a good dog. He's a right damn little dog, yeah. And they can, but they can go either way, kind of Jack Russell. Yeah. I've known nippers and yappers, but he's neither. Lovely. He's yeah, so, um, you saw the one thing uh, not that many people know yet is I've turned into a right softer we don't. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. What was your last Google search, Wit? Last Google search, you won't believe this, it was this very morning, and it was the night, and you will know, there's a film out. And I've read the book, and the book was called Alive, and it was about the 1972 Uruguayan rugby team air crash in the Andes. And I was searching for a bloke called Fernando Parado, who was the man who saved the whole lot of them. And he was the softest one on the team, and he was known to be a softer, and it was him who saved them. And the point was that you don't know what you're capable of until you're called to do it. And the problem these days is nobody's ever likely to be called on to do what they're going to find the true character. So that was this morning's Google search. 
That's incredible. There you go. I love that. Absolutely incredible. Who, incidentally, yeah. Nando Parado, and the guy who walked out the mountains with him, was a bloke called Roberto Canessa. And I knew all this anyway. I'm just wanting to build. I read the book a couple of times. Brilliant book, by the way. And those two became the worldwide highest paid motivational speakers wow. in the world. At the height, in America only, yeah. for companies, in terms of team building and motivational, they were, they were, they were getting 100 grand a night. And they could have worked every night. Not, not quite MJK level. The, not you've got quite the, the 50p and a, <laughs> a free pot pie. <laughs> I mean, what an incredible story. Unbelievable. That's, I think that's fascinating. Well. Unbelievable. Yeah. If you, if you get a chance, yeah. read the book. Be a lot of people don't read anymore, uh, but you, I'm sure you'll be able to get it on audio. Uh, but the book I always has, every book on every subject has more than the film could ever put in because you need a six hour film. Of course, it's always better to read the book. So, so far more descriptive and you're far more immersed in it. it. It's amazing, sorry, really. I mean, people know it's Christ, I'm not telling you what you don't know that. No. Mm -hmm. I can see. <laughs> what annoys you most in life? Not a lot these days. Uh, I do get riled up. Um, uh, b -b 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 I, I hate to be a bit political, but the idea... The whole idea that people can identify with anything they want to do and therefore become it will destroy society because you can identify with somebody who hasn't done something when you've done something wrong and it can't be your fault. And then, you know, if, we, if the truth isn't important anymore, well, what we got? Where do we go? We're doomed. You're we're right. absolutely doomed. So if the truth doesn't matter, we're... We can't hamburger or hot dog, aren't you? What? Yeah, exactly. You, it's just us. You know, it's, uh, I've seen a funny one. There's a bit of a pushback going on now. Guy had parked a big old diesel smoky flipping pickup right in the slots that are quite sought after for electric vehicles, right? And, and when questioned, because it's right next to the door and they want any more parking, he said, uh, well, it identifies as an electric vehicle <laughs> and just carried on walking. So what, and that's exactly right. It's, that's he exactly the way to be. So that, that annoys me. That's, no, I'm fully on board. The fact that, that Nobody stood up and gone, what? Shut up. That's bollocks. <laughs> That's exactly the phrase. <laughs> what was the last thing? One of my favourite questions. What was the last thing you did for the first time? Last thing I did for the first time. Right. Let's have a look. Well, the last thing I did for the first time, and I won't be doing it again, He's tried me hand at plastering. Oh, okay. Now, I'll have a go at quite... I'm not, I'm not a tradesman at all. And if I want a boiler fitting, I get a man who ain't going to blow me up to do it. And same with the electrics. But I'll run my own wires and I'll run my own pipes and I'll do the hard work or the, the, the physical work yes. part of it. And then get somebody in who makes it safe. Um, tried plastering not long ago and it's hard. And... You can't even half do it because you end up with a job that looks shit and you're going to start again. So, I mean, if you're into some plumbing pipes and you cover them up, yeah. still got no water just about. But actually, the plastering things are... I can, and I won't be doing it again. It's hard. So I used to give it a try. You were the local guy called Andy now, and he's brilliant. And he, he came up point. Right. <laughs> I'll see what's going on here. <laughs> give me a minute. I'll fix it. Yeah. Um... What's the most random fact that you know? I know tons of random facts. Thought you might. Yeah, tons of random facts. The most random one is... God, these are hard. <laughs> the most <laughs> random fact. Christ. I must know something. You totally do. Do you know what? I'll get halfway down your lane and you'll go, that's the one. They're not easy to come by. Random facts. No, but I do know. I, I know. I, I come out with stuff sometimes and everybody goes, why would you? And how have you? <laughs> you even thought about that. Uh, random fact, random facts. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a, I mean, I know a lot about early motorbikes. I've read quite a lot. I'll tell you what is I'll tell you what is fairly random. 
in, I, I, I do a lot of war reading, mostly Second World War, but I've got quite into the First World War. I like mystery. And I think a lot of people do. And I like reading about things that I would have no concept of because it would never come up in my lifetime. And I'm thankful for that. Um, here we go. Three times as many horses were killed in the First World War than people. Can you believe that? That's an impressive... On the British side. Yeah. On the Allied side. British and That is yeah. an impressive fact. Yeah. Okay. Terrible fact. It's awful. Terrible fact. Um, Charlie Hiscott, your good friend, he's well in, he likes his, uh, his... Well, that's where I've got it from, isn't he's it? Always he's always Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, we haven't mentioned Charlie. What a flipping lad he is. Yeah. Love Charlie. Uh, I mean, weirdly aggressive at times, angry sometimes. <laughs> but even when he's angry, he can laugh at him. He's such a... But I love, I love Charlie. Super intelligent, you know. Yeah. Very. And I'm, I'm doing a lot of... Uh, we've been out to oh, flipping Verdun and, and we've done some... Eep and saw the Meningate um, last post and we've done all trench stuff and Normandy and yeah, and he's, he's so good to spend a bit of time with he was yeah, smashing yeah. having him on the show he's brilliant because he's absolutely he, brilliant it's one of those where people kind of know who he is he did the World Superbike gig he did the grid walk I thought it was brilliant me too and I tell you what I thought it was on the edge of being too hard actually at times you know what I mean yeah well I, you know because you, you're in the same I, 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 you know I, I, what it's like right. <laughs> oh, 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 I wouldn't have said that. And people love him for it. He's great, Charlie. Was it Loris Baz that started the season off with, oh, we might get some polite questions now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's just Loris Baz, like, whatever. That's one of those. Um, when you were talking about going into the, the mill and the lad falling through the floor. Yeah. No, it was a. Uh, uh, the, the, old, the old folks. Not the old man. Nah, yeah, old yeah, 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 the old folks home, sorry. Yeah. Um, not including speeding. Yeah. Have you ever knowingly broken the law? Sure I have. <laughs> well, sure I have. Uh, not including... It's a tricky one when you don't include speed. <laughs> not including morning offences. Yeah. Because um, there were quite a lot of that, I'll be honest, uh, when we were kids at least. Mostly speeding, but other stupid stuff as well, really. Really stupid stuff. Um yeah, I would have said I had, yeah. <laughs> we, when we were kids, we used to, we used to go about as motorbikes on the road and avoid and run away from police and we did a lot of that and I am sure I've bought stolen goods, I'm fairly sure I have. Uh, I've never knowingly done anything like, you know, I've, there's no, been, been no cutting and shutting of motorbikes no, and no, pushing, no. putting numbers on, there's been none of that, but I'm sure I have, yeah. It, that's the same it, with Tommy Hill and he was he's like yeah I have yeah but I, basically not so no moral reason just because <laughs> I'm scared of getting caught <laughs> and even now you know it's alright saying oh you know we th these people he's come from a you know he's, he's had a bad upbringing so this means that it's not really his fault I'm thinking hang on a minute what puts you off committing a crime is the fear of retribution <laughs> It is, whether, right. it's, whether it's parents or police, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Does it the full it got, authority? It got that bad. I was brought up, for the most part, in a house next door here, on the airfield, right? Yes. Middle of nowhere. And we'd go off on his motorbikes, all sorts of flipping shit box field bikes and built up out of bits with nicked and flipping borrowed and bought with his paper round money. And, and we got chased home quite a few times by all sorts of people and phone and ring and my mum would have to explain why it was my fault and, and all that and eventually mum I'd come on and, and she she could read me like a book if I came in and was normal no problem if I came in and was sheepish she, she knew something had gone on and she got it down look and she'd think well the police aren't following that's a good <laughs> but no we're pretty I think we're pretty good kids yeah. but, but we were kids so. that's the thing it happens doesn't it that's a big part of growing life's rich well, tapestry yeah. that's the way two more questions we Legs or boobs? Do I have boobs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not going to say a front or back door, are you, in one of these? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, who's the most famous person in your fan? If you're around in 90s and 80s, Mine Opfler, Sam LeBon. Wow. 
Okay. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else? Uh, some reasonable, some the reasonable people. Legends. I mean, if you're into if you're music, you'll yeah. know. I mean, if you're a certain age, you'll know. They were quite famous. Sam the ones a mega blow. Really? Honest. Oh, what a flipping blow. And, and maligned for being, you know, like a, what's the word? Like bubblegum pop flipping. What a flipping talented bloke. Brilliant bloke. Even now, right? Why would he reply to one of my texts? But if I said to him, what, what you got going on? You know, have you got, he, he'd reply. He's a, the loveliest, loveliest bloke. It's so nice. Uh, we, years after he was at his height, but yeah. he's still, he still who he is, years after I bloody raced bikes, because he raced bikes for me, that's the thing he didn't buy, see. I sent him a text saying, uh, you, you've got a gig coming up, you've got this comeback gig coming, and you're at so 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 so. Straight back. What do you want? When do you want? Backstage passes, come and meet me. Me and Cal Foggy and my ex missus at the time, Andrea and Michaela, Rag him, uh, you, you, you're in Manchester, you know that wedding album tour? They got massive again, you know that? You know that? Um, you know the song. Yeah. Right? They got massive but again in the 90s after they'd been famous at yeah. Ordinary World. Ordinary like, World. Yeah. That's the thing, right? That's the time. Right? Yeah. It's called Wedding Album. Right, so want to come to Manchester. Fantastic. VIP tickets, backstage, introduced us to everybody and came and got pissed with us in the hotel. It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, so, Probably them. Who else? Who else? Who else? I know some in the bike world. Um, Kevin Schwantz, Freddie Spencer. These are if they aren't chasing them. Yeah. In my, I, mean, I don't. I don't make an habit of ringing them because why would you? Uh, them. Um, quite a lot. Uh, bike racer people. Um, some good names there. Yeah. So you don't make them so. daily, do you? And, and what you do, you want to be? You don't want to be a pest. Even though sometimes you think, wow. Kevin Schwan. I used to have posters of him on my wall. I think they're about you, Wayne. No, yeah. I don't well, bother you for a couple yeah. But you know what? <laughs> you look back and you think, you, and you kind of justify, what you don't want to do is look back on a career of any sport or any anything you do and think you could have done it better. And I'm lucky enough to think, I couldn't have done no better than that. I tried as hard as I could. I tried harder than what I should a lot of times and it went wrong a bit and it went right a lot. And the only reason I wasn't a world champ because probably I wasn't good enough to be a world champ. And I can sleep at night knowing that. But it's still, I'm still in awe of people who I, uh, I'll tell you, uh, do you know Andy Gober died this yes. year? Right, sad case. Totally self-inflicted, everything that bad that happened to him, right? But a privilege to see how good he was. He was, I don't think I've ever been on track. Very might have been on track. I won't, I say on track because... I'd love to say I raced with Mick Dewan and Kevin Schwartz and Wayne Rainey, but that wouldn't be true. I was on track with them. I certainly sat on a grid and saw the back of the heads <laughs> and beat him drunk. And, and people like Carl, uh, who were brilliant in his day, and Keeley and uh, Scott Russell and you name them. And, and I'm happy to have done that. Uh, but I'm people like uh, Gober was as good as any of them and probably better than most. He was super, super talented. He was... A shocking waste, completely. One, one last, um, one last thing. Maggie Day, one of our patrons. We before we came out, we asked the patrons any questions for Whit, and Maggie's asked, "When will you be bringing the MJK down south?" Well, but apparently she said that your wheels are safer down there. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I hate to say if you're from Doncaster or the Barnsley or Mexborough particularly, but you don't slow down until you get to the venue because <laughs> something bad might happen. But anyway. Uh, the problem we're doing then the chat shows is don't matter where you go it's all reliant you know this mm -hmm. it's where you can get the venues that work for you yeah you don't want a thousand seat because you're not going to fill it with all due respect and that'd be silly paying for something you're not using you don't want 150 seat because if you only get 150 people you're actually losing money yeah for the most part so you want quite a specific venue with specific requirements. You need a big screen, you need sound and vision at work. You can't just go to a hotel conference room and make it work. Um, not without a lot of your own kit. Um, so it is difficult. It's not just quite as easy. And then you've got to fit in with the people who are doing the rounds anyway, uh, like, you, you know, your, your comedians and your, I mean, all them sort of Jimmy Tarbuck and all that. I think he's might packed in now, but, he, you know, he's not... When you're looking at who's on at your particular venue we're doing this weekend, it's yes. amazing who, you know, was 
Richard Digens and oh. all, you know what I mean? It's, it, it, people like that. I remember, I remember back, we went in a place, this is years ago, bless him, uh, but an absolute legend. We, and it'd been probably in his 70s, Ed, we were two days after, and this was in, what is it, Lincoln? Might have been Lincoln, in this, this theatre, Ken Dodd. Oh, we're like two days after Seriously. Ken Dodd. And I thought, do you know what? And my teacher said, I never make up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, when we're going down south, when we can, well, yeah. we, we haven't been down south. We've done a full, we've done, we've been around the south coast, we've done Exeter, we've done Torquay, we've done it in the past, but it doesn't work every place at every time. So, yeah. just keep watching. As soon as you can, we'll, we'll, we'll post a link yeah. to MJK um, events in yeah. the description below, which is where the Patreon is as well. Um, what else have we got on there? Merchandise, links to myself and everything that we've got. So, have a look at that. Maggie, thank you for your question. Thanks, what? Maggie. What a great way to finish. Whit, thank, thank you James. so much. Thank you, buddy. Always a pleasure, mate. Thank, thank you for letting us come up. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, James Whittam. Thank you.